Hello everyone, welcome back to Smart Interviews YouTube channel. This is Aniket. Today we will be discussing problems from weekly contest 406. Let's get started. Let's look at this question, which is the first question. Lexicographically smallest string of plus one. Given a string is containing only digits, return the lexicographically smallest string that can be obtained after swapping adjacent digits in S with same parity at most once. Digits have the same parity if both are odd or both are even. Okay. So here 5 and 9 have same parity because both of them are odd. 2 and 4 have same parity because both of them are even. Okay. Now what is the operation that we can do? We can swap adjacent digits which are adjacent to each other means they are side by side which are having same parity and this operation can be done at most once. Okay, so this is the question. Let's try to understand this with the help of an example. The given example is 4, 5, 3, 2 and 0. Okay, this is the number given. I'll try to check the digits one by one. I'll take these two. I'll check if they have same parity. Do they have same parity? No, right? I'll check, take these two. They both have same parity. So I'll interchange them. What will I get? 4, 3, 5, 2, 0. Okay. So this is what I'll get. Next, we can do this operation at most once. Okay. We can do this operation at most once. So this is one output that we can get. Let's see if we can apply the same operation in a different way. So the input was 4, 5, 3, 2, 0. Previously I have taken this. Let's try to take another pair. I'll take try to take these two. Do they have same parity? No. Next I'll try to take these two. Do they have same parity? Yes. So if they have same parity, I'll try to swap them. So I'll get 4, 5, 3, 0, 2. Now these are the two possible outputs that I can get. Out of these two, which is lexicographically smallest? Okay, so the lexicographically smallest is nothing but which have the smaller elements at the beginning. Okay, let's try to understand this with an example. Let's say we have 1, 3 and 2 and we have 1, 2, 3. Lexicographically smaller in the sense, here we can observe this is smaller than the this 1 2 3 is smaller than 1 3 2 so we can say this is lexicographically smaller now this can be applied to strings also a b c this is lexicographically smaller than b a c or we can say c a b okay now it doesn't mean that lexicographically smaller should only have the same characters we can also say s t u now this is lexicographically greater than abc so and abc is lexicographically smaller okay they can have any elements okay now let's say i give an example a b c and the other one is something like b b c out of these two which is lexicographically smaller we can say abc is smaller because a is smaller than b okay the position which is to the left side has more priority let's say even if it has b a a still abc is smaller lexicographically because we will first consider the weightage of A corresponding to B. See, A is smaller than B, so whole string is lexicographically smaller. One more thing. Let's also consider this example. Both of these, the initial three characters have are same, right? In both of these, initial three characters are same. But the length of this is greater than the first one. So we can say, ABC is lexicographically smaller than ABCD. 
these things you can research and try to understand them better and solve problems to get more understanding <clears throat> now these are the two outputs that we got 45201 45302 out of these which one is lexicographically smaller we can say the first one is smaller lexicographic lexicographically smaller because when we compare 3 here and 5 here 3 is smaller so this is the answer now by now you might have understood to get the lexicographically smaller we are starting from the leftmost character right if there is any character on the left side in the corresponding position which is smaller than the other one uh, in the ex other example then we can say the first one will become lexi lexicographically smaller one so the character which is on the left leftmost side has more priority now let's try to understand one more example 001 now <clears throat> zero, 00 both are same they have same parity even if we interchange them there won't be any change in the parity right <clears throat> there will there won't be any change in the output now these two don't have any uh, they, they don't have same parity so we can simply skip finally 001 will be the answer without any changes okay Now it's for sure that whenever we want to change we should start from the left side not from the right side. Now the very first pair with same parity we encounter we can interchange them to get the lexicographically smaller okay because we can do this operation at most once so we will consider the leftmost pair and swap them. Now whenever we find two pair okay two adjacent characters with same parity do we have to swap them need not be true right always see need not always be necessary because let's say we have something like three five when we consider this input these two are lexicographically um, you know uh, these two have same parity so we can change them but this need not give us the output without changing them we will get a better answer right so it's not that always we have to change when should we change and when should we not change we can simply co compare these two characters because 3 is less than 5 we will skip changing and we can explore other characters if we have further right so this is a simple question guys let's try to code it up so let's have a look at the code i'll find the length of the string now we'll be looping over the string i'll write a for loop and i is equals to zero now every time what we'll do we'll compare a character with the next character so I, is, I will compare the character at i and the character at i plus 1. So to not go out of bounds, I'll write n minus 1 over here. Now first what should what should we do? We have to check the parity. So s of i. Now because if we directly do this, we will get the ASCII value. So I am doing S of i minus this character 0. Get the value. We have to compare with the next one. So S of i plus 1 minus 0. Not to, if the parity is same, we have to check if the character over here which is 5 is greater than the next character or not. s of i if it is greater than the character next character you can simply swap them char ch is equals to s of i s of 
i is equals to s of i plus 1 and s of i plus 1 is equals to ch now because we can do this operation at most once after doing this operation I can simply break and come out of the loop and the answer will be stored in the string itself so I can return the string from here let's try to run it is working let's try to submit and see it works so this is the code for lexicographically smallest string now let's look at this question delete notes from linked list present in array okay so you are given an array of integer nums and head of the linked list return the head of the modified linked list after removing all the nodes from the list that have value exists in nums okay so we have been given this linked list with values 1 2 3 4 5 we have 5 nodes in it 1 2 3 4 5 and there is also a nums array which has 1 2 3 in it okay so from this array which has 1 2 3 4 5 we have to remove the elements present in nums we have 1, so we will remove this, we have 2, we will remove, then 3, we will remove this. Finally, we should remove the modified linked list, which has 4 and 5 in it. Okay. So this will be the output. Same thing. Example 2. Nums has one element one and this is the linked list okay because it has one we can simply remove these elements and return the modified linked list okay so instead of creating a new linked list we can do this in place that is we can simply remove the elements in between without creating a new linked list okay in the third example, we have 5 and the linked list is 1, 2, 3, 4. None of the nodes have a value of 5. So we'll remove, we'll simply return the same linked list. <coughs> okay. Let's assume that we have a linked list. We'll simply loop over the <coughs> linked list. Okay, we'll simply loop over the linked list. And let's say currently we are at this node. Okay. Now when we are at this node, can we delete the node in that place? We cannot do that, right? Because we cannot modify the previous link. But when we are at this point, we can check the value of the next node, which is this. Now if the value in this node, let's say it is 5 and we have 5 in the array, then we have to delete this, right? Then we have to delete this. Now how do we delete this? We can simply unlink this and we can join it something like this. Okay. Let's say this is head. Okay. This node is head. How do we unlink? Now when we do head dot next is equals to we can simply do head dot next is equals to head dot next dot next okay this dot next is equals to head dot current next is 5 and dot next okay something like this so this link will be removed okay so this is one operation that we can simply do now it is okay if we don't unlink this because 
will be traversing like this and this node will never be visited now we know that how to delete a node which is in between the linked list now we want to do this in place so let's say there is one more linked list given and this is the head of the linked list now let's say the value is there in the the value of the head is there in the array and we want to delete this how do we do that we know that at this position we cannot directly modify the links okay so for this reason we can simply use a dummy node okay a dummy node can be anything right it can have a null it can have a negative value or something like that which is out of range of the given constraints or anything so what i'll do i'll create a dummy node after this i'll simply add the given i'll simply try to link it over here something like this right now even if you if i want to delete this node i can do that by updating my links with this formula my new head will be the dummy node head dot next is equals to head dot next dot next okay we can simply do this now i hope you understand that we have to do this to remove the next node now let's say while traversing we are currently at this node the value in the node is let's say 3 now how do we find if the value is there in the array or not we can simply search linearly <clears throat> we can simply search linearly or to do this optimally we can store all the values of the array in a set basically a hash set okay if we do this we can simply check this current node this current value in the hash set in optimal time in less time okay i hope you understand the approach let's try to code it up let's look at the code we are given num sorry and then head of the linked list to search for the elements of the nums optimally we'll be using a hash set so i'll write a hash set declare a hash set of type integer after this i can simply insert all the elements of i can do it something like this let's just start add i as discuss we'll create a dummy node this node dummy new node some random value will connect the current dummy node with the head of the linked list now we can loop and delete the nodes we cannot really delete the current node but we can delete the next node so that is the reason we have used a dummy so we'll be checking if the next node is there in the next node value is there in the set or not if dummy dot next dot val if it is there in the set we can simply delete it so i'll simply write if set dot hs dot contains this thing this value i can delete it how can you delete that dummy dot next is equals to dummy dot next dot next if the next value is there <coughs> if the next value is not there we can simply move the pointer forward so we can do dummy is equals to dummy dot next 
okay at last what should be written we can simply return dummy dot next but dummy has already reached the last due to every iteration okay over here we also have to write the while loop condition while dummy dot next is not is equals to none because we are checking the value from the next node yeah the dummy has already reached the last so we cannot return the value from there so before looping before looping we can simply write a code here <coughs> Place node temp is equals to dummy. So the variable temp will be pointing to dummy, so that will not lose the link. And at last we can simply return temp dot next is equals to okay. We can simply return this value. We can simply return temp dot next. Let's try to understand this. We have declared a hash set, inserted all the elements of nums into the hash set. Then after that. We have created a dummy list, dummy list node, and then we have taken the dummy into temp. That is, in this variable, we are storing the address of dummy. Then dummy dot next is equals to head. Dummy dot next is not is equals to null. While dummy dot next is not not is equals to null, we are doing these things. Okay, we are removing the element if it is there in the list. Okay. so we are removing the node at last we can simply return temp dot next let's try to submit yeah so this is the code for delete nodes from linked list present in array okay so let's look at this question minimum cost for cutting cake you are given an m cross n cake that needs to be cut into 1 cross 1 pieces you are given n comma m comma n and two arrays horizontal cut is one array of size m minus 1 horizontal cut of i represents the cost to cut along the horizontal line i vertical cut is one more array of size n minus 1 vertical cut of j represents the cost to cut along vertical line j in one operation you can choose any of any piece of cake that is not yet cut into one cross one square and perform the following operation cut along horizontal line i at a cost of this cut along vertical line j at the cost of this okay so after the cut the piece of cake is divided into two distinct pieces the cost of a cut depends only on the initial cost of line and does not change return the minimum total cost to cut the entire cake into one cross one pieces let's try to understand with this example so you are given a cake of size 3 cross 2 so this is of size 3 cross 2 and horizontal cut is this and this is the vertical cut now horizontal cut is equals to 1 comma 3 what does it mean so this horizontal cut will take one unit of cost so this will cost us 1 and this will cost us 3 similarly vertical cut will cost 5 so to divide this cake so to cut this cake in sizes of 1 cross 1 we know that the number of horizontal cuts will be 2 and the number of vertical cuts will be 1 okay number of horizontal cuts will be 2 which is nothing but 2 minus 3 minus 1 number of vertical cuts will be 2 minus 1 okay and what is the number of pieces that will be getting will be getting six pieces which we can get from this one m into n which is six pieces okay now it is also given that the output is 13 how did we get this let's try to understand
now you can do any on any one of the vertical or horizontal cuts okay so what i'll do i'll take this cake and let's say first i want to go with this horizontal cut over here if i do that i'll get this piece and the other piece will look something like this so to do this, so to do this operation i have incurred a cost of one okay because the cost of this horizontal cut is one next this is the second option let's say i want to go with this horizontal cut again so i'll do a cut over here after that i'll get three pieces okay now what is the cost of this cut it is three right now i got three pieces to get pieces of size one cross one there is only one option left that that is i have to go with these cuts right i've done with this cut and also i've done with the cut which is three okay the only option left, left is this vertical cut now what is the costing cut if i do this over here this will cost me five five and five which is 15 so there were three pieces it will cost me 5 into 3 a total of 18 so 18 is the cost but our answer is 13 right so there might be one another possibility that will give us the answer let's try to understand that i'll put this aside for now Let's say I want to go with this vertical cut first. If I do that, I'll get two pieces. And this is one more piece. Okay. So what is the cost in cut guys? So there was one piece initially which will incur me a cost of five now let's say i want to go with this this cost this cut which will incur me a cost of two one into two so one into two plus something okay so i have these pieces as of now after that i want to go with this cut which is the only option left so after that i will get six pieces of size one cross one each of size one cross one and the total cost incurred is two into three because i am doing the operation on two pieces so two into three what is the cost guys five plus two seven plus six is 13 so 13 is the cost that i got and this is the minimum and answer for this example okay now how did we get this minimum answer if you observe one thing over here can you tell me which is costing us the most here can i say this vertical cut is costing us the more in the previous approach which we have done we first went with the horizontal cuts and then lastly we went with this vertical cut so we had three pieces to cut right so the cost was five into three which was costing us more but in the current approach we went with the vertical cut first and then horizontal cut right so initially we had only one big piece to be cut with this vertical cut so here it was only 5 into 1 okay by now we have some idea that to get the minimum cost which is the requirement of the question we have to choose the cut which is costing us costing us more initially right so that we'll have 
lesser number of pieces to cut okay because if you see here the number of pieces will increase as we cut more and more right <clears throat> let's do this for the second example as well <clears throat> so m cross m is nothing but 2 cross 2 so i want to cut this into four pieces to do the horizontal cut it is taking seven and to do the vertical cut it is taking four so it is costing us four so which one will go with so there might be multiple ways but in this example there are only two ways of doing that okay what if i go with this vertical cut first so i'll have two pieces initially costing me seven initially costing me four then the only option left is to go with this horizontal cut so i'll be getting four pieces at last but i'm doing that on two pieces which will cost me two into seven which is 18 right is 18 our answer no right our answer is 15 how can we get 15 let's try to understand instead of this vertical cut we'll go with the horizontal cut so we'll get two pieces and on this we can apply the vertical cut so we'll get four pieces okay initially we went with the horizontal cut which costed us seven and then two vertical cuts which costed us four into two and what is the cost here 8 plus 7 is 15 and this is our answer right so we have to first go with the cut which is costing us the more then after that we can go with the other cuts now how do we get the answer over here okay how do we get the answer now we understood that the order of cutting the order of cutting the cake how can we get these pieces over here which we have let's try to understand that so if you observe this piece it is only one so we'll consider number of vertical pieces as one and number of horizontal pieces also one okay we are going with this vertical cut first now it is dependent on number of the horizontal cut because there is only one horizontal piece okay one horizontal piece we can say find to one will incur the will be the cost incurred by us okay will be the cost incurred so five into one for the first cut now when with the when we have done this vertical cut When we have done this vertical cut the number of vertical pieces increase by one okay so this is two what are the other options now three okay we have to go with three now how did we get two over here because this is one piece this is one piece whenever we are going to cut horizontal in the next term next time okay there will be two pieces to cut right so we have increased the number of vertical pieces as one by one now three into number of <coughs> vertical pieces what is the number of vertical pieces is two as in this egg as we can see over here okay so the order is something like three into two okay now when we have done this when we have done this number of vertical pieces should number of horizontal pieces should increase right so we can say this is increased by one now next <clears throat> what is the next operation the only option left is one so we have one 
which will be doing over here let's erase this so here i have taken this cut i have these pieces now and these small pieces when i do this horizontal cut which is costing us one i'll do a cut over here right one is the cost of each cut and how many vertical pieces do we have we have two vertical pieces so we can say it is a cost after this operation i'll get six pieces of size one cross one okay so whenever you are doing a vertical cut you are going to multiply it the number of horizontal pieces or whenever you are doing a horizontal cut you are going to multiply with the number of vertical pieces now what is the answer 5 plus 6 11 plus 2 30 okay i hope you understand how did we get this vertical and horizontal cuts and you understand the part that we have to sort the array why do we have to sort the array because the cut which is costing us the more costing us the maximum should be done first okay let's try to understand with a small example and generalize and then we can go for coding part let's say we have this okay now let's say the cost incurred here is one two three four and five so number of horizontal cuts are four comma two the costs are four comma two and for the vertical it is five one and three okay after sorting we'll get two comma four and we'll get 1 3 and 5 because we want to make the cut which is costing us the maximum initially we'll start from the last so we'll have a pointer here we'll have a pointer here so we'll go with this cut first okay <clears throat> and we'll multiply with the number of horizontal pieces okay next the pointer will move to this 3 and 4 we'll compare both of these we'll find that 4 is maximum so we'll go with the cut which is costing us 4 the pointer will move again now out of this 2 and 3 which is more 3 is more right so we'll go with this cut and so on okay so we'll first so the first step is sort the array so we can also reverse sort the array but here we are simply going with the pointers starting from the last okay then we can use two pointers starting from the last and we can calculate the answer depending on the number of horizontal and vertical pieces okay i hope this is clear to you we will get more clarity when we code this up okay let's look at the code So I'll change this to H, which will be easier to code, and this will be V. Okay. So for the uh, the first step was to sort the arrays. So I'll be sorting them. I'll also sort vertical cut array. Is just sort V. Now. Um, for storing the answer, I'll take a variable. Now, as these are sorted, as we have discussed, we have to start from the last. So, I'll take two pointers P1. See, this horizontal cut is of size M minus 1. So, the last index will be M minus 2. Similarly, P2 will become N minus 2. Okay. Initially, the number of vertical pieces I can say it is 1 and number of horizontal pieces is equals to 1 so let's write a loop over here p1 should be greater than is equals to 0 
and P2 should be greater than or is equal to 0. I will write a condition if H of P1 is greater or greater than or is equal to V of P2, then what we should do? <coughs> if there is a cut which is costing us more, we have to go with that cut first. Okay. So my answer, I have to update my answer. Answer plus is equals to H of P1 into the number of vertical pieces. Okay. The number of vertical pieces would be VER. Now, I will obviously update my pointer. So P1 minus minus. Now there is one more thing. When we are doing this horizontal cut, and let's say the next time we are applying a vertical cut, the number of pieces, horizontal pieces will increase by one because of this cut. So we can say HR plus plus, we can write HR plus plus over here. In the else condition, I can do answer plus is equals to V of P2 into HOR P2 minus minus and then VER plus plus. Now there might be few elements, few elements left in any one of the arrays. So I can write a separate loop over here P1 greater than or is equals to 0. I can do the same thing as we have done here. Similarly, I can write a loop for vertical cuts also. P2 greater than or is equals to 0. At last, I can simply return the answer. Okay. Let's try to run and check. It's, it is accepted. Let's try to submit. Yeah, and yeah, it got accepted. Right. So this is the code for this question. Minimum cost for cutting cake. So guys, I hope you like the video. For more such informative content, do like and share the video. And also subscribe to our Smart Interviews YouTube channel. Until the next video, this is Anike Deshmukh signing off.